And welcome to Hannity. Tonight we are at the end of what has been a decisive week of wins for President Donald Trump. In the span of just a few short days, the president delivered the most powerful State of the Union address, address I have witnessed in my adult lifetime. And oh yeah, the impeachment witch hunt totally implodes. The president exonerated forever Petty Pelosi, while her months of this long charade culminating in what was a pathetic, nationally televised, petulant temper tantrum. Look at your screen. This is what the modern radical Democratic Party has achieved in three plus years with their nonstop rage, resistance, their witch hunts, conspiracy theories, and lies. A few ripped up pieces of paper, and that's it. Now, Petty Pelosi, well, she's not exactly a master strategist. You can see, and we witnessed this week, she is an angry, bitter, mumbling, bumbling, sore loser, and likely will, in fact, go down in history as the worst Speaker of House uh, that we have ever seen. One thing is a certainty tonight, we can say this, her days as Speaker are now numbered. And once again, we were right all along, and the media mob were, as usual, wrong again, raising the hopes, the expectations of their dwindling audiences, yet again, only to disappoint them yet again with more fake news. Now, of course, this impeachment charade, the schumer Schiff sham show, would end in utter failure. But they were raising the expectations of their, well, small audience viewers. Another huge loser in all of this, well, that would be quid and pro and quo Joe. And his zero experience on Hunter was being paid millions. Now, despite the attempted hypocritical double standard cover up by the Democrats and their allies and the media mob, we on this program were correct. We told you the truth. Joe, Hunter, guess what? They engaged in nothing short of what was a shady, sleazy, and yeah, we believe criminal, potentially illegal behavior in the country of Ukraine. We were also correct that Ukraine interfered in the 2016 elections to help Hillary Clinton. Don't believe me? Let's look at the January 11, 2017 investigative report in Politico. And by the way, that conclusion also came about election interference by Ukraine, separate and apart from Russia, from a Ukrainian court. Just like when we were correct in reporting that high-ranking government officials abused their power and committed FISA abuse. We were right that the Trump campaign was illegally spied on by members of an opposing party at the height of the election with deep state operatives behind almost all of it. We were correct that Hillary Clinton, yep, Russian interference. She bought and paid for the dirty, unverifiable Russian dossier we now know full of a pack of lies. In other words, it was Russian propaganda used by the Democrats. Even the New York Times finally got the picture and they pointed out we now have reason to believe, as they said, it was likely Russian disinformation all along. Make no mistake, we were right about the deep state, which was chock full of Trump hating Obama holdovers. Two of these anti Trump bureaucrats were removed from the White House, thankfully, earlier today. Both Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman and his twin brother, they were escorted out of the White House complex. Good for the president. And you might remember Lieutenant Colonel Vindman was trashing the president during his testimony in the House and rebuked the administration's policy in Ukraine. Mr. Vindman, if you want to be in charge of foreign policy, why don't you try and run for president? Then we find out his twin brother was assigned to the office that was vetting publications from government employees, like John Bolton's book. Although at this time, we don't have the evidence that he handled the Bolton book, but I have my suspicions. It is clear President Trump is draining the swamp, and this is what it looks like, and for good reason. We have been right every step of the way. The media mob has been wrong. Nothing we have reported has even remotely been disproven. We now have the inspector general, that's Horowitz's report, vindicating the reporting we've done for almost three straight years on this program. Doesn't seem to matter to the radical Democratic Party and their co-conspirators, state-run media mob. But that doesn't matter to the radical Democratic Party either in any way. They don't care about the truth. They all live in this bubble. They never question their own narratives. They never listen to opposing viewpoints. Most of them don't even probably have conservative friends. They hate this show. But thank you for making us number one. We want to live up to your expectations every day. And telling you the truth matters to us. Getting the facts matters to us. But to our, well, colleagues in the media, they don't seem to care. And we know that they frequently mistake their own far-left opinions as undisputed facts. 
and they actually say in their own heads they're journalists. They're not, they're not journalists in any way, shape, matter, or form. They're blindsided by all their failures and their prejudices and political points of view. This impeachment sham is but the latest example. And by the way, it was never going to be successful. And today, the president pointed out the charade is now completely and totally and utterly dead and meaningless. Take a look. They should, because it was a hoax. That's a very good question. Should they expunge the impeachment in the House? They should, because it was a hoax. It was a total political hoax. Yep, this latest impeachment hoax might now be in the rearview mirror, but the lying, the smears, the besmirchment, the conspiracy theories, they never end. Just today, the president scored a massive victory in the courts. We have a three-judge panel unanimously throwing out a frivolous lawsuit brought by more than 200 Democratic members of Congress. They lost again. The president's not sick of winning. The suit alleged the president was improperly profiting from his time in the White House. Um, he actually loses money by working in the White House. But the court ruled lawmakers didn't have any legal standing to proceed with their claims. And meanwhile, rage-filled, delusional Democratic lawmakers are now pressing forward with a variety of frivolous investigations, more investigations, endless investigations, more conspiracy theories, more talk already of impeachment against the president. A brand new effort to subpoena John Bolton. Here we go again. This is not over. Now, there is one way I have figured out that you can end all of this. The nonstop lying, the smearing, the slander, the besmirchment, conspiracy theories, witch hunts, the hoax. There's one way you can do it. In 270 days, you will be the ultimate jury. And by the way, you don't ever have to waste your time watching any fake news in the future. You can just turn that, tune them out, like most people are. The way to stop this from ever happening again and continuing, in 270 days, you will be the ultimate jury. You get to take back control of your country. Now, if you like President Trump and you'd like to see him be able to work with a little bit of peace and not having this, these constant you know, threats hanging over his head, 24 hours a day, every day of the week. Well, when you vote for him, you might want to vote for Republican congressmen and Republican senators. Do the do-nothing Democrats, do you really think they deserve your trust? And by the way, it's now more clear than ever that the Trump agenda, as we saw on Tuesday night, a massive success. Despite the never-ending, nonstop radical resistance, our economy is breaking record after record and booming. January jobs numbers, get that. It beat all expectations yet again. A whopping 225,000 new jobs added. Even the New York Times, they were forced to admit wages for African Americans is on the rise after a decade of stagnation. That would be under Biden Obama. Today, President Trump celebrated America's undeniable economic success. Let's take a look. This morning, the brand new jobs numbers came in. We smashed expectations and created 225,000 new jobs last month. 225,000. They were thinking maybe 100, maybe 105. I was watching all the geniuses this morning on television. <laughs> what do you think it's going to be? It's going to be 110. 225. Pretty good, right? 225,000 for last month. That's only last month. That's 225,000 new jobs for our American family. How great is that? A booming economy, only one part of the successful Trump agenda. We'll scroll it for you. Take a look. We've been the only show on TV, apparently, that ever does it. But also under this commander-in-chief, the ISIS caliphate has been destroyed, utter, utterly decimated. Oh, ISIS leader al-Baghdadi and his top lieutenants, they're all dead. Iran's top terrorist, their number one state sponsor of terror, led by this guy Soleimani. He's dead, too. And now the White House has confirmed that al-Qaeda's top leader in Yemen was killed in a U.S. airstrike ordered by President Trump. Over the past three years, this president has been an effective leader by every measure. The State of the Union, well, is remarkably strong. And the same cannot be said for the Democratic Party. Well, look at their very first caucus, an utter, complete disaster. You want to entrust the government to them? They couldn't even run a caucus in Iowa. It has taken them the entire week to count a few thousand votes, and the results are still riddled with errors and inconsistencies, and nobody believes them anyway. 
And meanwhile, a multi-front civil war is erupting inside the Democratic Party. This is getting entertaining. According to a Politico report, Elizabeth Warren supporters, they are now accusing Mayor Pete Buttigieg of white male privilege for declaring victory in Iowa. And both Warren and Mayor Pete, they're losing to socialist Bernie Sanders in a new morning console poll. And, of course, the DNC is now looking for new ways, well, to rig the primary election against Bernie. Yet again, remember Donna Brazil? Uh, she made the phone call. She was upset. She didn't want to make it. Yeah, they rigged it against Bernie the first time. Now it looks like they're trying to do it again. His campaign is accusing the Democratic Party of changing the rules, which they did, to allow Mike Bloomberg into future debates without meeting fundraising requirements, you know, like 250,000 unique donors. Bloomberg, worth an, what, estimated $55 billion, well, he's planning on spending more than a billion to buy the Democratic nomination. Now, his campaign is facing today, you can't make this up, plagiarism charges. As a matter of fact, eight separate instances. The Intercept first reported that passages in at least eight of Bloomberg's policy proposals were directly copied from various media outlets, including fake news, CNN, Time Magazine, CBS. Of course, he'd be in alignment with the most liberal news organizations in the country. I guess there's one thing money doesn't buy, and that's honesty. And I guess he just figures, well, I'll just take what they have. I don't know what I really believe. I'll say whatever I need to say. If I were a Democratic voter, I think I'd feel very discouraged about now. The party is in complete disarray. The candidates are weak. They are radical. They are uninspiring. The president's agenda is a massive success. And in 270 days, it will be the American people that will decide whether we continue peace and prosperity, and that means economic success, and that means safety and security of our country. Or do we want to turn it over to the Democrats? Well, we did have the Obama years, and we did drop $150 billion in cash and other currency on the tarmacs of mullahs in Iran that chant death to America. We did, after eight years of Biden-Obama, have 13 million more Americans on food stamps, 8 million more in poverty, and the lowest labor participation rate since the 70s. And yeah, Obama-Biden accumulated more debt than all 43 presidents before them combined. By the way, now they want to take it into a deeper socialist hellhole.